In this lesson, we're going to cover how to place in text and other annotations into an existing drawing. In this case, I have the whole table.idw file open, and it can be found in your Chapter 5 exercise folder. I'm going to start off by changing to the annotation panel. And in the annotation panel, I'm going to scroll on down, and I'm looking for the tool called text. The shortcut is the letter T. And it's very similar to the way that AutoCAD would work, if you have AutoCAD experience. I'm going to select two points to define the bounding box for that text. And at this point, I can just type in whatever text I want. And everything that you would expect to be able to do inside of an editor, we can do here. So the justification, how do we want that aligned left, center, or to the right? As well as do we, how are we going to align it vertically? We can do that. If you want to stretch the text out, you can select the type of spacing that you want. The font, you can go back and adjust that. The size, you'll notice that there are, are only a few sizes available at this point, and that's actually being driven by the note text style, but we can override that. So when you override that, what you want to do is make sure that you have the text selected, and then let's type in five millimeters, and now that text that was highlighted will be five millimeters. I can also go back and highlight certain text and make it bold, italicized, or underlined, just like you would inside of Word. We can go back, you can adjust the color if you wanted to. You could rotate the text. And under our type options here, this is where we can pull information from. That would be metadata or the eye property information if you wanted to. So in this case, if I wanted to determine, you know, some information about the cost center or anything like that that would actually be selected here so in this case let's go back and place in the information about the file name and we'll add that parameter and we can also add some more information in regards to the specific parameters so in this case I have the whole table part file that the drawing view was created from so the type of parameter in this case do I want model or user and then the parameter itself in our list here, these are all the parameters that are used. So in this case, I'm just going to select D33. And let's change the precision to one decimal place. And we'll go ahead and we'll add that. And then lastly, you can go back and you can add any symbol that you would want. So in this case, let's go back and we'll, uh, let's place in the, the roll process direction. The arrows down at the bottom will allow you to zoom in and zoom out. So you're not really modifying the text at all. You're just seeing more or less of the text inside the dialog box. In this case, let's go ahead and click OK. And if I zoom up on that, you'll see that all of my information has come right across the information about the hole. In this case, I may want to have some space in between there. So I'm just going to double click on the information inside there and make that modification and also that color kind of difficult to see so I'm just going to change it all back to black and let's quickly add a second line of text so I'm just going to start off by doing the same thing create a bounding box and we'll type in second line whatever we want for our text And if I press the escape key you'll notice I can go back I can move the text around however I would like to do we can also go back and do an alignment between the two text sections that we have here. The text that you select first is going to take precedence, meaning that the second one that you select will go back and move towards the first one. Now that they're both selected, do a right click, and then select the line from the menu. And this is where we can go back in this case. I'm going to align them vertically, or do we want to do horizontally? So in this case, let's do horizontal. And you can see exactly what happens here. Let's apply that. So there is no uh, constraint that's applied. So I can still freely go back and move them around. It's just an alignment option. So in this case, let's go back and align the second one to the first one. In this case, let's do it vertically. So you can see definitely it has preference there. And there was also an option for an offset if I wanted to have one offset in from the other. We're able to do that. The other way of placing in text is with leader text. 
as you probably guessed from the description of the tool. I'm going to select an edge or a point, and then I'm going to place in a leader line. And go ahead and right click continue. And then from here, the format text dialog box, just like what we looked at before. And let's type correctly, click OK. And you can see that information is in there. We can stretch that back out, move it, realign it, whatever we need to do with the, the text option. What's nice about the, the leader text, if I go back and I move the view, the leader will move with it. So that's pretty nice. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. What I want to do next is let's take a look at some other symbology that we can add. So again, from the annotation panel, we have surface, symbols, weld, feature, the feature identifier, datum symbols, and the datum targets. So they all work exactly the same. In this case, I'm going to just place in a surface texture. So I'm going to, again, select an edge, select a point, define where I want that to go, right click continue, and then once you press on continue, the dialog box, depending upon the annotation type that you selected, will appear. The nice part with all of these, it's using the, the WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. So as I select inside of the dialog box, the symbology changes immediately so you know exactly what you're going to get right before you even click on OK. There will be no surprises here. So go ahead and click OK. And if I press the escape key, if you ever want to go back and edit that, just simply move your cursor back over to that symbol, right click, and then in this case, edit surface texture. But of course, whatever symbol you're editing, it'll show up here in the menu. So again, any change that you make, let's go back and change that to 64. Go ahead, click OK. And away we go.